Morning everybody, this is Wade from Wade's Orchids here. And uh, there's been a little bit of interest lately about this technique that I've been using to mount some bubble films. Uh, bubble films are, uh, every, I guess every orchid has its share of challenges. And one of the big challenges for bubble films are uh, things like, like this. This has about a two and a half inch rhizome be between each growth. It's a very nice plant. It's a, a named clone. It's bubble phylum long forum uh, variety adorable gold. And something like this is very, very challenging to find a way to uh, either mount it or pot it or bat even putting it in a basket this will very shortly grow out of a basket no matter what size that you put it into so i have kind of developed this method of using a styrofoam block here and here this this is a a larger piece so that you know kind of what i'm talking about these are both just remnants from doing construction work if you contact people that are doing construction, you might be able to pick up some pieces like this for free. Uh, this is, these are two inch thick pieces and it's star foam insulation. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a mount of it. Uh, usually in the past for, for many, many years, the preferred mounting media is cork bark. Cork bark has become very expensive and to get a piece that, that is this long costs a fair amount of money. And uh, again, this the, the distance that this thing puts between the rhizomes, not all of them are, are that bad. It, it varies a lot, but this, you you would go through a lot of cork <laughs> put it that way this is very very economical and it has the benefit of retaining uh quite a bit of water or moisture for the plant and bulb films do like to to be moist so we're going to get down to it here first thing that i do is i just go and cut through this and kind of round it off a little bit so that it doesn't look like a square piece of something and you don't have to really be very picky at, at all about how thick you make your cuts here or anything you can go in and out like this Okay, that, that kind of thing just, just adds to the, the, what will end up being the, uh, a more natural look. So, um, after I do that, I, I just kind of rub off the, the little pieces that are kind of hanging on there. And... Now I'm going to clear my workspace off a bit. There we go. Okay. Now, next order of business is we need to have a hanger for this. And this is about an 18 inch piece of stainless steel wire and we're going to start out by bending it in half and find out where the center of it is and it's right about there yep there we go so that's where we want to make our bend and well, we got it almost in half here. Uh, trim it up a little bit. There we go. 
Okay. Now we're going to uh, bring these pieces out a little bit here. And then here we'll go straight down again. This is 18, or no, this is 14 gauge, I believe, which is plenty strong enough for the hangers. Now down here at the bottom, we want to uh, make another sharp bend. None of this is rocket science, guys. Okay? So, there we go. We got that. One thing to do yet, and that is to bend the top around like this so that we have our hanger. Now, I need to take these and Turn them a little bit so that they're facing towards each other. Kind of like so. Okay, now all we have to do is decide, you know, if there's any top or bottom or front that, that you're doing uh, to uh, choose it. I, I make it so that the, the hook goes back. And you just kind of arrange it so it's at about the middle there. And then all you do is you pull up a little bit as you're pushing in. And that will do very nicely. I'm going to crimp that a little bit yet. Okay. So, that's holding in there, and the more that, that weight that you put on it, the more it will push in, or pull itself in. So, here's our, our hanger, and, and we're going to uh, put that, tie that in so that it will stay better. Now, let's get this out of the pot. It looks like it has good roots here. Healthy plant. I want to try to remove all of the potting media if possible. I'm going to a mountain like this. Also, this this has part of an old rhizome hanging down, and I'm going to cut that off. There we are. Okay. Good. We can set this aside and bring up our bag of sphagnum moss. It's very good in when you're doing something like this to have good quality sphagnum moss. Um, this is nice long pieces. A lot of the pieces are, are like 12 inches in length. Uh, there, there's hardly any little fine pieces here. Uh, there's still a couple of things like this and I, I usually pick them out as I go along. But we're going to start here and I have some fishing line here that I put in this five inch pot and it'll let me pull it up and at the same time kind of keep it from totally unraveling here. Okay. So, we can start by tying this on.
And it doesn't matter where you tie it on at. And all of a sudden, I seem to have turned into all thumbs. But I just wrap this around here a couple of times. Pull it tight. There we go. Now we can get started. So I'm going to start at the bottom here of our mount and just uh, wrap some moss around here. And I usually try to be fairly generous when I'm doing this. The hardest part is when you start. And I'm dropping moss all over the place here. <laughs> now for something like this, it, it's, I think it's pretty important to not let any of that styrofoam show through. So I just pack it on wherever I see it sticking out and keep on wrapping. I'm a wrapper. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually pretty generous when, when I'm putting the moss on and, and also with, with how I wrap this here. Sometimes it's best when you're doing this to just concentrate on, on putting a nice piece or group down on, on one side there and securing it and then going to the other side. Wonder how much sphagnum moss I'm getting in my coffee. Just a little bit more here. Trying to find a nice bit here to work into the top. Again, like I said, if you if you see a piece or see a, an area where you can see the styrofoam, you can just put on a little bit more and, and just wrap it around. And we're going to
work our way down here. And now it's time to put the plant on. So, what we do is arrange this the way we want to have it hanging. Okay, and just the, this particular plan is going to be fairly easy because it, it's not branched or anything. And I'm going to start out with this all the way at the bottom and just try to hold it the way I want it to be. And start going around. Now you can you can bring this around the bottom like that. You see how I got the roots pulled up. Don't don't be shy about the amount that you use here. Uh Fishing line is not real expensive. Okay, I'm just going to go around a couple more times, try to get some loose pieces here, and then we're going to tie it off. And to tie it off, we'll just cut this back here. Find where things are. I notice that, that uh, things could be a little bit tighter with the plant. Now when you go to tie this off, all you have to do, stick your finger in there, okay? And bring it around. couple of times then go back like this a little bit and it will grab pretty tight there okay I usually allow a little bit extra when I go to cut it off, and we're done. All we have to do is I'm, I'm going to uh, put the date on that I mounted this on the back and drill a hole in here and hang it from here with a wire. And you can see what our finished job looks like. And it's going to have, hopefully, a, at least a couple of years of growth here to uh, grab a hold of. And we have a fairly inexpensive mount here that looks good and will serve us real well. Now, this is for 
especially moisture retentive plants. I emphasize that because something like Tolumnias or uh, a Dendrobium that likes to dry out quickly or something like that, it will not work that well for, okay? So again, uh, ideal for bulb phylums and any other moisture retentive plant. I hope you like this. This is Wade from Wade's Orchids. Uh, any comment you have is great. Subscribe if you like this, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>